Yeah. 
dead man come out of that grave come out of that grave when we take captives and go in those chains they go in those chains when we praise dead man come out of that grave come out of that grave when we take captives and go in those chains they go in those chains when we praise dead man come out of that those chains, they go on those chains. There is resurrection power when we sing the name of Jesus. Resurrection power when we raise a mighty sound. Come on, let the praise get loud. Make that empty grave breathe out. There is resurrection power. It is Out of that grave, come out of that grave when we sing captives and go with those chains, they go in those chains when we praise dead men come out of that grave, come out of that grave when we sing captives and go in those chains, they go in those chains. There is resurrection power when we see name of Jesus, resurrection power, when we raise a mighty sound, come on let the praise get loud, make that empty grave resound, there is resurrection power. Are you ready for week two right here, looking at the book of Philippians? Last week, we talked about this word rejoice, and I want to bring you back to it, okay? Because here's the deal. I want to help you stop losing joy. I want to help you stop losing joy. That's the title right now. Go ahead and write it down. Stop losing joy. Write it down. Let This is, this is going to imprint into your life and I hope change your day, your week, and possibly your entire life as we get into Philippians chapter 4, looking again at this word rejoice. So last week, if you didn't watch it yet, go back and watch it. The difference between joy, the awareness of joy, and the ability to rejoice, the acting on joy and how that makes a change in our life. This week, I want to help you stop losing the joy that's in your life. So Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4, Paul writes and he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Man, thank you, God, for such an incredible word. Praise God that his word is good. Even now, his peace is going forth, and it is guarding your hearts and your minds. It is going forth into Monday and Tuesday in places where you don't even know that you need to be guarded yet, and his peace is setting up protection and guarding for your mind in those things that haven't even come yet. So, two times we see it here. Rejoice in the Lord. I'll say it again, rejoice. The last time in chapter 3, he says, I'm going to repeat it to you. I already said it once. I mean, it's all over the book. He's talking about this concept of rejoicing. He says it two times. And here's what I know. The, the real thief to our joy ain't the devil, and it ain't the people. You like that word, ain't? Praise God. The text is. It ain't the devil, and it ain't the people that are around us. It ain't the situations that are around us. The real thief of our joy is our prayer life. Because just as soon as we get joy and just as soon as we take a step of faith and we rejoice and we act on joy in our life, just as soon as that happens, it seems like it begins to have a rug pulled out from under us so many times and it can be so quick to blame other people what's going around and to say, oh man, it was this or it was that or it was that job or it was this place, whatever it may be. But it isn't. That's not the case. Because 
If the joy is inside of you, then no one else can take it. And the devil can't rob anything from you unless you put your hands out and you allow him to do it. So therefore, we're reading the text and what is it saying in here? It's talking about our prayer life. The real thief of our joy is our own prayer life. It's our lack of prayer that's robbing us of this joy. We can rejoice in anything and everything when we pray. When our life is rooted in prayer, rejoicing in God becomes second nature. It begins to flow out of us. It begins to be how we live. It's our action. It's who we are. It's what we embrace. It's where we're at. It's what we do. It's what we speak about. We're filled with God. But when our prayer life begins to slip, it doesn't matter how many devos you read or how many YouTube things you watch or or whatever. But when your prayer life begins to slip, your joy begins to go right with it. And the only way to maintain, the only way to keep joy in your life is to keep praying. I'm going to say it again. The only way to keep joy in your life is to keep praying. Prayer is crucial. I mean, how many different ways can I say it to you right now? Prayer is crucial in maintaining joy. Read it in the text. Read it and go see it. You don't need to wonder anymore why you haven't had joy or why you had it and it went away or why you were trying to act on it and it didn't work. It worked for a second, but then it didn't. You don't need, here's the thing. Now you know that it's prayer. It's not anything else. It's just, it's just if you'll be steadfast in that, if you'll take hold of the scripture of truth and say, okay, if my joy is slipping, then i got to look at my prayer life and see, is my prayer life slipping? And if it is, man, this makes perfect sense. And you know what? If my prayer life begins to go, so does my joy at the same time begin to go up. But I want to speak and say, okay, so what about, though, because I know that so many people that are here in this moment right now, you, your heart wants to pray. It's because it says in Scripture, I want to do what's right, but yet I don't do it. So what do we do when it becomes difficult or confusing or frustrating to pray? What do we do when, when we feel like we've been trying to pray, but we, it's just not working out? We don't even know how. We don't know. We, 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 we thought we knew, and, and now we're praying, and it seems confusing. Or we thought we knew what to pray for, and now we don't even know what to pray for. When you're feeling lost in your own prayers, what do you do? Well, what does the text say? It says that we should pray, and in our prayers, we should have supplications. This is, this is prayer. It's just us talking to God. A supplication is us making a request. It's saying, let our request be known to God. Not only are we praying to God, we're just in conversation with him. Now we're sharing with him our request. And then what does it say? With thanksgiving. I want to show you the power that's in this text here for your life. I have a a server all the way from Olive Garden that's going to come up here to share with us a great illustration. Just put it right there. Just put it right there. Perfect. Let me help you out. Wow. Give him a hand right where you're at. Praise God. Okay. So here's what I have. I have some items right here. All right. And, and for all of those that are visual, I'm going to talk you through this verse in reference to the items that are right here. Okay. So first, first and foremost, we have this great, this great um, container of water. All right. That lid is on there snug. I've been doing my workouts. A good thing I've. Hmm. Um, okay, that was my uh, wrist muscle flexing. We have the ice right here. We have what, what is some juice right here, and we have some other miscellaneous things. So this is the cup. The cup is you. The cup is me. The cup is us. What we need to do is we need to put some ice in the cup because ain't nobody really trying to have, you know, like, uh-oh. I'm a problem solver, guys. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Give us a little ice in there. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right, that's enough ice. All right, fun fact, I've been making this drink for my pregnant wife because she's having a tough time drinking water. You're having a tough time praying, this is going to help you. You're having a tough time drinking water, this is going to help you, okay? So you put some water in here. But the problem is, you're like, man, I'm not really, I'm not really enjoying or finding a way or I'm finding it difficult to drink the water. I don't really know what to do. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. What we do is we juice it up. you got to juice up your prayer life. And you know what this represents? This represents the thanksgiving. 
Okay, because when you're praying and you're getting frustrated and it's getting difficult and you don't know how to pray and you don't know what to say and you don't know what to do, it's no problem. You don't like to drink water? Juice it up. It's not all juice. It just got a little flavor of juice in it. Here's what you do. See, I don't know what to pray. I don't know what, what supplications and requests to make to you, God. I don't, I'm, I'm feeling lost. I'm feeling confused. My joy is slipping. I want to focus on my prayer life. What do I do? What do I do? I juice it up. You got to do the same thing. You have to juice up your prayer life, and you juice it up with thanksgiving. All of a sudden, you turn the page, and you say, you know what? I'm not worried. I'm not worried about what I'm going to pray about or what I'm going to do or what God's going to do. I'm not going to fret on that. I'm just going to, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I was like, I think I cut this thing. Boom. I'm just going to juice it up. It's no problem. So I'm praising God. Let me get a little drink of this thing. Oh, man, the Lord is good. So in the midst, now the juice, the thanksgiving begins to go into my life, the waters, the prayer. That's just for fun. That can be the Holy Ghost right there, you know. And this can be the, uh, something else. This can be the straw that puts it all together. It's just so you can drink it. You know what? It's the Word of God. And that's what this can be. Okay. And so you, you begin to take the juice and you begin to pour it into your life. And all of a sudden now, you know, it doesn't matter what supplications you make. It doesn't matter if you know God hears you or doesn't hear you. It doesn't matter if you know what direction to pray in or what to do or where to go. None of that matters because now you're focused on Thanksgiving. And when your prayer is wrapped in praise, you can guarantee that your life is going to be full of rejoicing because that is the spirit and the essence of God. No longer am I just aware of what God's doing. Now I'm acting on what God's doing. No longer is it just like, oh, I'm praying. I'm lost. I'm in the dark. I don't know what to do. I know I'm supposed to pray. I know I'm supposed to hop online. I know I'm supposed to be part of a church. I know I'm supposed to be worshiping, but I don't know how. And then what we do is in the midst of that, we say, you don't have to know how. All you have to do is praise God. Begin to give him thanks. And what happens when we do that? What does it say? It says, it says, and with prayer and supplication and the juice. Come on, praise God for the juice. We pour the juice in there so my wife can drink it. So you can have lots of water and be hydrated. And with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. And the peace of God. Raise your hand where you're at right now if you want some peace in your life. If you want the peace of God. It's time to... It's time to spice up our prayer life with what should have been there all along, with what should have been happening, this praise and thanksgiving wrapped up in expectation that's going forth that says, God, it doesn't matter. I'm not asking you to do it. I'm knowing that you will, and regardless, I'm just praising God. It's having that spirit. It's having that spirit like those three boys had when they were being thrown into the fire. And they said, I know my God will save me, but even if he doesn't, I won't bow to your gods. Even if my God doesn't hear my prayer request, even if he doesn't act on him, even if he doesn't answer him how I think he should answer him, I will know how to give my God thanks and praise in the midst of anything going on. You better believe. But, you know, some of you out there are like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm preaching as hard as I can. Hope God's word is going forth in your life. But you're out there and you're thinking, okay, this drink ain't for me. Or it is for me, but I need a little extra jolt. You ever needed a little extra jolt? It's like 2 in the afternoon. You got seven more hours left in your day. Yeah, you're working late. And you're like, how am I going to get through this? And so when you go over, you get some coffee, put a little caffeine in you, and you're like, yeah, man, double shot, you know, quadruple shot, five shot. I don't know. I don't know how. Honest truth, I don't drink coffee. You would think, most people think, oh, man, you got to be razzed up on some caffeine right now. And I'm like, absolutely not. This is the Holy Ghost, man. I don't need no jolt from no coffee. You need that? That's your thing? You go for it. But me, I'm powered by the Holy Spirit. That's what's giving me my jolt. So I want to help you because in the flesh, when we get tired of the flesh, we're like, oh, man, I need a jolt. Let's get some coffee. Let's do oh, man, I need to get some food in me, whatever. Like, that's awesome. You go for that in the flesh. But in the spirit... You're, you're like, oh, man, well, I'm, I'm praying, and I'm praising, and I'm, I'm, I'm presenting my request, and I, I just need a jolt. No problem. The text has the jolt for you. Verse 8 of chapter 4. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, come on, whatever is commendable, if there is any 
excellence. If there is anything worthy of what's the word? Praise, thanksgiving. If there's anything worthy of this, think on these things. You're feeling like your joy is being pulled out from your hands? You, you, you know in your, in your spirit, you, you want to rejoice, but you just can't. I want you to stop losing your joy. I want you to stop losing it to all the things that have no right taking it. I want you to take the juice, the praise of God, and I want you to pour it into your prayer life. But even more, if you feel like, I just don't know, it's just not working, go to the Word of God and it says whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is pure and lovely and commendable and excellent and worthy of praise, think on these things. Things. Think on this. Stop thinking on everything else. It doesn't say go to what worries you and what stresses you out and what your kids are doing and what your spouse is doing and what your boss is doing and what your neighbor is doing and what them on Netflix is doing and what them on Instagram and, and Twitter. Is anybody on Twitter? I don't know. Is on Twitter and Snapchat. Is anybody on Snapchat? I never had one. I have no idea. But it doesn't say think about all of them. It says think about what is true, what is lovely. And when you position your mind, that's your extra jolt. That's what you need. Two o'clock in the afternoon, you're starting to feel sleepy. You don't need caffeine. You don't need coffee, I promise. You know what you need? You need whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is honorable. You need it on your mind. You need to think about it so you speak it. You need to speak it so you live it. You need to live it so they know Jesus. So you can stand and say, I rejoice because there is one king. There is one way. There is one truth. And it is Jesus Christ. Come on. you got to rejoice in your life. This is how they'll see us. This is how they'll see you at work. Man, how do you, how do you walk through something so difficult? And yet it doesn't totally destroy you. Yes, I know you're hurting, but man, that would, that would crush most people. You say, oh man, I, I know how to rejoice. Because my prayers are wrapped with praise. So they ascend to the right places. And when it happens, even before I get what I ask for, you ever read a book? There's that crazy thing in the front of the book. You can't even get to chapter one. It's trying to make you read stuff already. Man, books, you know. You're like, what's a book? Open your phone, look, at, look it up. Even before he sends what you're asking for, because he will, he sends peace to guard your mind. Whether you ask for it or whether you don't. Wrap your prayers in praise and send it. Let's stop losing our joy and be wrapped in his peace that guards our minds beyond all understanding that you don't understand why my mind is such in a great place. Why? Because I've chosen to look at God's word and God's word says whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, I'm going to think on it. Therefore, my mind is wrapped in peace. Therefore, my flesh can rejoice in the living God regardless of anything that's happening. I don't have to blame anything or anyone for taking my joy because I am standing fully rejoiced in who God is. And I want that in every single believer's life for that rejoicing spirit to be overflowing and breaking family curses and crushing strongholds and breaking sexual addiction and coming forth and saying I'm here, I rejoice in the living God his peace is guarding my mind go and read the text and get your jolt today and let's stop looking to so many other things, it's time to juice it up thanks to the Holy Ghost I love you and I'm praying right now, Father let, let your spirit right now touch every person Every Christian, every believer, every person trying to pray and trying to seek you feels like their joy is being pulled from their hands so many days. One day it's there, one day it's gone. Lord, give us consistency in our joy. And the recipe for consistency and rejoicing is prayer wrapped in praise. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, let me tell you what. God's word is good and tastes good. I hope that you will juice up your prayer life with 
praise, wrap it in there and send it into the heavens and let the peace of God come and surround our life. That joy would just be so filled in us. Man, that's a good, that's a good word. Also, you know what, as I'm, as I'm holding this drink, I'm, I'm praying right now in my spirit for my wife, for my future kids, and I know you have prayer requests too. Even just now as you're standing there, be praying in your spirit for the things that God is placing on your heart. I love you guys, I'm so thankful. Continue to go to Authentic.Church and give online. Continue to have the Venmo app and give through Venmo, and together let's impact the kingdom of God. I know summer's coming to a close, but God is always open. I love you, I'm praying for you, and keep in touch this week.